Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our video so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of topic 9, Metals. Our first topic is the reactivity series. Remember in the previous video, the reactions of metals with dilute acid, cold water, steam and oxygen? From these, we see that metals react at different rates. Some are more reactive than others. The reactivity series is a list that shows how reactive different metals are from most reactive to least reactive. Here is the order of the reactivity series. Potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, carbon, zinc, iron, hydrogen, copper, silver and gold. You should know this order by heart, so here's a mnemonic to help you remember this. Please stop calling me a cute zebra. I have collected shiny gold. Even though hydrogen and carbon are not metals, they are included in the reactivity series because they are used to extract metals from their oxides. Now what do you actually mean by the reactivity of a metal? It means how easily the metal can lose an electron to form a positive ion. Metals that are more reactive lose electrons easily and form positive ions readily. Metals that are less reactive do not lose electrons easily and form positive ions less readily. This is often shown in displacement reactions. We learned in the previous chapter that a displacement reaction is when a more reactive element takes the place of a less reactive element in a compound. So, in the case of metals, a more reactive metal can push out a less reactive metal from its compound. This behavior helps us rank metals by how reactive they are with the most reactive metals forming positive ions the easiest. So if you examine this table showing displacement reactions between metals and metal salt solutions, you will see that a metal higher in the reactivity series will displace a metal lower in the series from its salt solution. Magnesium reacts with aqueous ions of zinc, iron, copper and silver to displace them from their compounds. Zinc reacts with aqueous ions of iron, copper and silver but not with magnesium ions. Iron reacts with the aqueous ions of copper and silver but not with zinc or magnesium ions. Copper reacts with the aqueous ions of silver but not with zinc, iron or magnesium ions and silver does not react with the aqueous ions of magnesium, zinc, iron or copper. So from this table we can understand that magnesium is the most reactive metal among these followed by zinc, iron, copper and finally silver which is the least reactive. This happens because more reactive metals lose electrons more easily, forming positive ions. Let's look at some reactions based on the metals and their position in the reactivity series. As we previously learned, highly reactive metals react vigorously with cold water, producing a metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Potassium reacts vigorously with cold water, producing potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, often igniting the hydrogen and creating a lilac flame. 
Sodium also reacts quickly with cold water, forming sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, but with less intensity. Calcium reacts more slowly with cold water, producing calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Potassium, sodium and calcium are highly reactive metals with potassium being the most reactive. Their reactivity with cold water increases as you move up the reactivity series. Less reactive metals like magnesium do not react with cold water but will react with steam to form a metal oxide and hydrogen gas. So, magnesium reacts with steam to produce magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas. The reaction is less vigorous than those of potassium or sodium with cold water. Magnesium is less reactive than potassium, sodium and calcium, so it reacts with steam, which provides more energy, rather than with cold water. Metals react with dilute acids to produce a salt and hydrogen gas. Magnesium reacts vigorously with dilute hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Zinc reacts moderately with dilute hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Iron reacts slowly with dilute hydrochloric acid to produce iron 2 chloride and hydrogen gas. Copper, silver and gold do not react with dilute hydrochloric acid because they are less reactive than hydrogen, with gold being the least reactive of the three. The reactivity of metals with dilute hydrochloric acid decreases as you move down the reactivity series. Reactive metals like magnesium and zinc react quickly, with magnesium reacting vigorously, while less reactive metals like iron react more slowly. Metals such as copper, silver and gold, which are low in the reactivity series, do not react at all. To deduce an order of reactivity from experimental results, the reactions of metals with water, acids and oxygen are observed and compared. Metals are assessed based on the speed and intensity of their reactions with their reactivity ranked from most to least reactive according to the strength of these reactions. Lastly, let's discuss why aluminium seems unreactive. When aluminium is exposed to air, it quickly forms a thin layer of aluminium oxide on its surface. This oxide layer protects the metal and stops it from reacting with water, acids or other substances. So, even though aluminium is reactive, it looks unreactive because this protective layer prevents most reactions. That concludes part 2 of topic 9, metals. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here is a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye-bye.